RNA polymerase molecules are these biological catalysts that are used by our cells to basically synthesize RNA molecules from DNA molecules. So this process is called transcription. And in transcription, we basically copy the genetic information found in the DNA onto the RNA molecule and then it's the RNA molecule that is used in a variety of different ways to basically synthesize the proteins that are needed for the survival of that cell. Now, we know that DNA molecules are very long molecules. They consist of many, many nucleotides. The question is, how exactly does the RNA polymerase know where to begin the process of transcription on that DNA molecule? So if we have many of these genes and many of these nucleotides, how exactly does the RNA polymerase know where to bind and begin the process of transcription of some particular gene of interest? Well, basically, in prokaryotic as well as eukaryotic cells, we have these regions on the DNA known as promoter regions or promoter sites. And what these promoter sites are, they're specific sequences of nucleotides that can bind very well to the RNA polymerase. And so when the RNA polymerase binds onto the promoter site, it knows it has to begin the process of transcription. Now, even though both bacterial cells, which are prokaryotic cells, and human cells, which are eukaryotic cells, contain these promotocytes, are, they are slightly different. So, let's begin by discussing the promotocytes we would normally find in a prokaryotic cell, such as, a, such as a bacterial cell. So, we have two sequences that act as promoters. One of these sequences is found 10 units, 10 nucleotides, to the left of that initial start of that transcription process. So to the left of that bacterial gene that we want to transcribe. Now the negative simply means it's, it's to the left, it's upstream with respect to that bacterial gene. And this sequence is known as the Pribno box. So the Pribno box contains a consensus sequence, a sequence that doesn't change when we go from one organism to another organism. And the sequence is T-A-T-A-A-T, -A 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 where T is thymine and A is adenine. Now we have another promoter that is found 35 nucleotides upstream to the left of that bacterial gene and this contains a consensus sequence of TTGACA. So we see that one of these promoter sites is found 35 nucleotides from the start of that transcription process and the other one called the Pribno box is found 10 nucleotides from the start. And so when that RNA polymerase is traveling along our double-stranded DNA molecule in that bacterial cell, it eventually travels very, very quickly until it locates these regions. And the reason it slows down is because it binds well to these regions. And once it binds well, it begins the process of transcription. Now, remember, RNA polymerase reads our DNA molecule from the 3 to 5 end and it synthesizes from the 5 to 3 end. And so as the RNA polymerase travels along the double strand DNA molecule, it doesn't use this molecule as the template, but it uses the complementary DNA strand as the template. So if we look at the complementary strand for this particular molecule, it will basically begin on the 3 end and end at the 5 end. And it's that particular DNA molecule that the RNA polymerase uses as its template. So once again, in this diagram, this is not the template, but the complementary sequence to this DNA molecule is that template that the RNA molecule, the RNA polymerase, actually uses. Now, let's move on to eukaryotic cells. In eukaryotic cells, just human cells, we also have these promoter regions, but we also have additional sections of the DNA that play an important role in basically enhancing this transcription process. So, we have two important promoter regions. One of them is known as the Tata box. And the reason we call it a Tata box is because it has a consensus sequence, T-A-T-A-A-A. -A -A -A. This Tata box is also known as the Hognes box and it is found 
25 nucleotides to the left to the start of that transcription. So to the start to where our eukaryotic gene is found. Now we also have a cat box and we call this a cat box because it has a consensus sequence C-A-A-T. So the full consensus sequence is G-G-N-C-A-A-T-C-T -T, but this is the C-A-A-T, that's why we call it our CAD box. So this is found 75 nucleotides to the left, to, uh, to the upstream side of our initial gene where we initiate that process of transcription. And finally, something that we don't find in prokaryotic cells, we have this section known as the enhancer sequence. And this enhancer sequence is not actually a promoter sequence, but it's basically a sequence onto which a special protein can bind to. And then once that protein binds onto the enhancer sequence, this moves all the way to this region here and it forms a complex and that essentially uh, promotes that process of transcription. It basically increases the efficiency of that RNA polymerase molecule. Now, the thing about these enhancer regions is they can be found either upstream to the left or downstream to the right with respect to where that eukaryotic gene is found. And these enhancer sequences are found very far away from that eukaryotic gene, usually thousands of nucleotides away. So in this particular case, this is 1,000 nucleotides away from this eukaryotic gene. So we see that the RNA polymerase travels very quickly along our DNA molecule until it locates these promoter regions at which it binds onto the promoter region and it begins the process of transcription. It transcribes that bacterial cell and it uses the DNA molecule that is complementary to this DNA molecule that is shown here. Now the question is, how does it know when to stop that transcription process? Well, in the same exact way that we have these promoter sections that initiate the process of transcription, we also have these termination sections, termination sites or termination sequences that essentially terminate or end the process of transcription. So essentially the RNA polymerase will continue transcribing until it reaches a termination sequence. So in this particular diagram, this is our gene and this is our termination sequence. Now, what's so special about the termination sequence that it allows this process to basically end? Well, the termination sequence usually codes for a special type of structure on that RNA molecule. For example, a hairpin. And when that hairpin structure is formed, that RNA, uh, that RNA polymerase molecule will spontaneously dissociate from that RNA molecule. So to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following diagram. So let's suppose that this is the complementary sequence to this gene here. And so this is the 3N because this is the 5N and this is the 5N here. And what that means is, as the RNA polymerase moves along this DNA molecule, it essentially stops here and it begins transcribing that complementary template, that DNA molecule. And as it transcribes that molecule, it will continue forming that RNA molecule until it reaches this termination sequence. Now, it will form that termination sequence, but once it forms the termination sequence, that termination sequence encodes for a signal we call a hairpin and this hairpin structure contains the stem section and the loop section so the hairpin is also known as the stem loop structure and as our RNA molecule forms this structure because the bonding is no longer strong enough it will dissociate from that hairpin and so now we form that RNA molecule and that RNA molecule can be modified in different ways if it is found inside eukaryotic cells. Now another way by which we can terminate the process of transcription is by using a special protein known as Rho and we'll discuss what the mechanism of this protein is 
in a future lecture. So the important point about this lecture is there are these promoter sites and these termination sites which basically work with that RNA polymerase and allow that RNA polymerase to basically transcribe that gene of interest. It allows these promoter sites allows the RNA polymerase to locate and detect where that gene is and these termination sites basically allow the RNA polymerase to terminate or end the process of transcription.